top seeded Rafael Nadal of Spain taking on the number two seed Guillermo Coria of Argentina. I'm Leif Shiris alongside superstar Jimmy Arias. Would that be appropriate, Jimmy? I thought you forgot my name for a second as you were struggling for words. Well, I was trying to describe you as a former U.S. Davis Cupper and a former top tenner. We have two top ten players going at it in the final here, and Nadal would be the favorite in head-to-head. -head. He would probably be the favorite in form. He may even be a little fresher physically, and uh, this is a rematch of uh, the Italian Open and the Monte Carlo Finals. Of course, those were came on clay earlier this year. How does the surface change the matchup today? Uh, you know what, I think it doesn't change it all that much. Nadal, 19 years old, you can see he's big and he's strong, number two in the world right now. I think these two are just gonna slug it out on clay, on grass, on hard court with their same games. They're the two best defensive players on the ATP Tour. And so it's gonna be difficult for them to break down the other guy's game. They're gonna have to find little openings, work the ball, but it's gonna take a long time in each point to win a point. See Nadal's road through to the final. Just the one set loss to Justin Gimmelstab in uh, the second round. As the Tennis Channel brought you that match as part of our bonus coverage here from the China Open. And uh, took out Peter Vessels in his uh, other match that same day. A long day taking on uh, attacking players. And then Ferrero in that semifinal where he said that was the best he's played so far in the tournament, Nadal. He needs to play that well again. Even though Guillermo Coria has been a little bit strange in the way he's played here, especially his semifinal against Thomas Johansson, he looked tired. He's 23 years old, number six. He's trying to catch up to Andre Agassi at number five in the ATP race, into the ATP race. And he has won nine singles titles in his career so far. His opponent today has won nine titles this year. Yeah, Nadal has had the sensation. Il Coria for um, a year and a half was the best clay quarter in the world. Now uh, that title goes to Nadal, but he'll certainly have a good opportunity today. He knows this man well, and he's played well on these courts. That semifinal against Thomas Johansson, Coria saved three match points. A remarkable effort to stay alive and keep his hopes for his 10th career title right here at the China Open. All of them on Johansson serve, by the way. Johansson was serving 6-4, 5-4, had three match points. He said afterwards, had I gotten a big first serve in, I, I'd be sitting here as a finalist. But I didn't get any serves in. I got a little bit tight. And Corey was able to, as he normally does, fight through that game. He's very tough to put away, Guillermo Corey. He's a great fighter. Normally, but I just don't like the way he looked in that match. He looked a little tired, and when he plays against this guy, it's going to be tough if you're tired. Yeah, here is the head-to-head. -head. This is the fourth meeting between these two, the three prior meetings. Nadal has won two of them. You mentioned Monte Carlo and the Italian Open this year in the finals both times. So these two are familiar with squaring off on Sunday, playing the last singles match of events. These guys are that good. These are their year-to-date one loss before this tournament started as Nadal now has 71 wins and he's trying to pass Roger Federer for mo most wins on tour. Here's a look at Guillermo Coria on grass just to show you that he can play on all surfaces. That's right. Wouldn't expect him to be that solid on grass, but he did reach the round of 16 at Wimbledon this year. So Coria, 23 years old, out of Argentina. As we take a quick glance at the champions' race, as her points earned so far just this year, from January 1 till the end of the year. And of course, the top eight will qualify for the Tennis Masters Cup, the year-end championship at the end of the year. And Nadal very strong in his position there. It's sad in some ways that a lot of times the year-end championship will decide who's number one in the world. That's not going to happen this year. It's Roger Federer's broken away from the pack and number two is pretty sewn up as well for Nadal as he is broken away from the rest of the world. So not the drama at the year-end championship that there sometimes is. Yeah, Federer and uh, Nadal have been so dominant this year. In fact, they've shared all the Master Series titles. Uh, first time that's ever happened. Federer winning four of them. Nadal winning three, of course, two remaining. Uh, in October and November in Paris and Madrid. So we'll see how it shakes down. But these two guys have been the dominant players, as you said. So clinching their spots early. Jerry Armstrong is our chair umpire from Great Britain. 
course, Corey, always a man that uh, a chair umpire has to reckon with. <laughs> yes, he is. As, as Corey likes to use any ploy he can to get under his opponent's skin. He's done it well all year long, and he's going to need some you know, some of that against Nadal, though. It's tough to get under Nadal's skin. He's got pretty thick skin. He's a great fighter. He's very focused and very intense when yeah. he goes out on a court. You have to admire the competitive instincts of these two guys. Well, let's take a look at uh, Jim's keys for Guillermo Corey here in this matchup. Well, forget his serving struggles. Double faults galore for Guillermo Corey lately, and he's going to have to get over that. He's going to have to take some risks. He's not going to just outsteady Nadal. And I think you got to finish the points off at the net when you're playing against Nadal. It's impossible to hit clean winners from the back of the court, as Ferrer tried yesterday. Nadal needs to keep the ball deep. Control the points with his forehand. I'd like to see his forehand a little more aggressive. When he's hitting like that, he can win some points against Coria and attack Coria's second serve. That's really an attempt just to get in Coria's head. Run around, whip, whip a few forehands on the second serve, and let Coria start thinking about his second serve a little bit. Yeah, and Coria has been doing that. He's struggled with the double faults all week long, but uh, this is the matchup. We had hoped for Rafael Nadal taking on Guillermo Corey, the top two seeds here in Beijing. It's the championship match up next on the Tennis Channel. Nadal will need all of those competitive fires burning as he takes on Guillermo Coria, his clay court rival, and um, they are playing on a medium speed hard court here in Beijing. I think we're still going to see some long, tough points. I don't know how these guys are both so fast. And they're not offensive players, really. I don't know how they're going to finish points, but we'll find out in a second. Both these players willing to do so much running, so much work with their legs. And it will be a physical test for Coria. He was looking somewhat jaded in his semifinals physically, but still able to prevail. Does he have enough gas to go the distance against Nadal? He was in a very strange frame of mind in the semifinal here, no Coria was. He didn't, even when he got up a break in the third set, he's shaking his head to his coach, throwing his hands up in the air. Didn't look as though he was happy to be here in Beijing. Yeah, he never showed any great demonstration of excitement or celebration at the victory, which was a remarkable win. And his speed will be tested again today as he's going to need to get up on top of that high bouncing ball from Nadal. You can see that that's exactly what he tried to do on that backhand and couldn't quite catch up to it. The ball got up too high and behind him a little bit. Corey wasn't moving as well as he normally does in the semifinals. And already today, twice now on the backhand side, he wasn't quite in position. And you've got to be in great position. You've got to have a good base when you're playing Nadal. His ball's so heavy. You're going to make errors if you're not there. Strong start by the Spaniard. And uh, his improved backhand looking very strong here in the early goings. Of course, his win over Juan Carlos Ferrero in the semifinals. That was his 21st straight win against Spaniards. He has 13 consecutive wins against Argentines. Wow. He's, these are the clay court players, the Spaniards and the Argentines, and these are the guys that have been losing to Nadal all year long. He's only lost a couple of matches on clay for the entire year, and it was early in the year. He's That's on right. an incredible hot streak of wins. Yeah, his last loss to an Argentine came in Buenos Aires, which was during the South American clay court season at the start of the year. So it's been a while since he's uh, 
tasted defeat by an Argentine player. Can Coria find a way through here? This is his first service game. Now that time, Coria stepping up, getting up on top of the ball. He does have a beautiful inside out forehand. We've seen that all week long. He loves that shot running around his backhand. He can hit it short and angled. And that will really be an effective shot against Nadal. There's an example of what Ferreira wouldn't do in the semifinals. Take a shortish ball, rip it, and come in. I know that Nadal passes well. But you've got to be willing to finish the point off at the net sometimes. Can't let him, Nadal have the freedom to think, all I need to do is put it back in play. You're not going to hurt me. You're not coming in. 14, <clears throat> yeah, we were both surprised that Ferrero was either unwilling or unable. Well, there were a couple times he in. came in and he looked completely inept. Hitting a drop volley one time. He didn't reach the net. Well, for a man who struggled with his serve, he was uh, displaying great confidence in that game. An ace and a nice, easy start for Coria. Problem for Coria is he's lost to Nadal a couple of times already this year, and that was back in the day, the spring, when he knew how to serve. He is going to have some double-faulting issues. He's had it all week. It's going to happen at some point in this match, maybe not till 4-all or 5-all, but that's going to make it even more difficult for Coria to come up with a win here. Miss that shot. Corey with the drop shot didn't hit it that well. But Nadal didn't do enough with this forehand. Corey, that's what he loves. He had his little target. He the line was open. I'm surprised at that mistake. <clears throat> Showing off some soccer skills there. <laughs> yes. Coria absorbed some serious punishment before. Knocking off a clean winner. He did it. He was trying to draw Nadal forward slightly, and he was finally able to, and it left that little opening. You got to give Corey a credit there, as he had to deal with a couple of nasty forehands before getting the shot he wanted. Remarkable that Nadal seems to me to keep improving as this year has gone on. His serve is starting to become more of a weapon. It's not a weapon yet, but he's hit some aces here. He's getting a little more on it than he had during the clay court season. And his backhand, he's been able to flatten it out a little bit at times, as opposed to in January when I saw him. He was really flipping the ball with a lot of topspin, but couldn't get it to go through the court. He's starting to be able to do that as well. 
he keeps going at this rate. Watch out, Federer. Yeah, Nadal is really, right now, the clear-cut challenger to Federer. Trying to surpass Federer in match wins this year, as you mentioned. Putting together a remarkable one run and his 10th title. Where most players, after winning 10 titles, would lock up the number one spot, but not Nadal. So Nadal, the world's number two, is up 2-1. Well, our final here at the China Open, a rematch of the final in Rome earlier this year. And what a final this was, a five-set thriller that Nadal was able to win in a tiebreak, a seesaw affair that is the longest final in the history of the ATP. It was five hours and 14 minutes to be exact, and it was such a grueling match that Nadal pulled out the next week of Hamburg. He was supposed to play in Hamburg. He couldn't physically make it. Coria did play, but what's funny is I don't think Corey has been the same since either. He hasn't played as well since that final. It took a lot out of both of these guys. Nadal winning a tie break in the fifth, an incredible match. Now Nadal really stealing the crown from the number one clay quarter in the world. And of course, this was one of the important stepping stones as he headed to the French Open and won his first Grand Slam title there. Nadal winning at 8-6 in that final set tiebreaker. Coria, two points from winning that final in Rome. So here today on a hard court at the 2005 China Open, this has the makings of something special. Here's Coria serving at 1-2. As you said, Corey won a lot of points with drop shots in that match. It'll be a little more difficult for him to employ that tactic on a hard court. Boy, he's used that inside out forehand well so far in this match. I remember recalling that match in Rome and Corio, once he plays the, t the drop shot, it seems to trigger this sequence of events that he likes. It's almost like small ball. He likes to play mini tennis, drop exactly shots and angles. Right. You would not want to play him in mini tennis. <laughs> no, you would. He, would. he would make you look silly. And he makes a lot of the top players look silly once he gets in this sort of pattern. And one last reference to that Rome final. Coria was up three games to love in that final set. He had break points to go up four love. So perhaps some of those little seeds of doubt that are showing in his serve here, perhaps they were first beginning to sprout in Rome when he just couldn't close down the doll. It's actually scary when you think back at his career. Roland Garros final, he was up two sets to love. And I think a break in the third before he lost to Gaston Gaudio. <laughs> of what these two can do to each other. Very quick, very physical baseline points. Got a brief glimpse at Carla. She is the wife of Guillermo Coria, looking happy. Well, I hope she's got a comfortable seat, because this one looks like it could be close, and these rallies could be long and arduous. Nadal has been so lethal off this forehand wing, not only this week, but all year long, and another winner. It's funny because in his first match that we brought you here against Justin Gimmelstab, his forehand was just sitting there 
Like a balloon, Gimmelstab had all sorts of chances to attack and really had a good chance to win that match. But since he's gone up against baseliners, he's opened up with the forehand a little bit, hitting it a little stronger. I don't know if he thought Gimmelstab just get in and play against this guy or something. There was something wrong mentally. He didn't hit the ball. Maybe Gimmelstab was taking him out of his rhythm, because you're right. Nadal seems to get stronger when he can play these kind of long rallies. Stretch Corey out along that baseline. Well, what a season Nadal has had. Nine titles. Brazil, Acapulco, Monte Carlo, Barcelona, Rome, Roland Garros, Bastad, Stuttgart, Canada. Yeah, that's ridiculous. He's playing almost too much, I think. It's going to be tough to keep this number of tournaments on his schedule. Yeah. Yeah, he's played a lot of tennis, but uh, showing no ill effects here at the early going. He's hold serve easily. 3-2. Well, look at some of the teen sensations on the tour. Five or more titles in a single season. And Nadal trying to surpass the great Mats Villander, who won nine titles as a 19-year-old in 1983. I like Nadal's chances of getting at least one more title this year. He's playing a lot of events. In fact, it probably is going to happen right here today in Beijing. Break the all-time record of Mats Villander. I'm surprised Villander won 9 in 83. I'm going to have to. I know it's in the record book, but. That's right. Well, he won the, Aust uh, the Australian Open that year. Lost in the French Open final to Yannick Noah. Great Swedish champion. Now a member of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Beautifully played point from Korea. He is so talented because he can play offensively and defensively so well. He doesn't get probably enough credit for how well he can take the ball early and do the things you just saw him do. He volleys well when he comes to the net. The only question is really, does he get tight? Which he does sometimes in the big, big matches. And now this new serve problem that hasn't crept up yet in the final. Don't want to get in a mini tennis matchup with Corey as Nadal was about to try to do there. This was not a great drop shot. There's two poor drop shots that Corey has hit. And he's won one of the points and really should have won both. to win. Remember my Jimmy's keys before the match started. I said control the points with your forehand and that's exactly what Nadal did in that rally. He never even had to hit a backhand. Running around that one to hit the winner in the in inside out. Well, when, you, when you have a great weapon like that, I know you had a great forehand. You want to hit it as often as you can. Well, Coria tried to sneak in on the serve. But Nadal saw it and just hit a clean winner. See, I think you need to sneak in on your serve to the deuce court, although that might have been wide. That's what Coria was saying. I think the best time to serve and volley against Nadal, deuce court, short and wide serve. He's so far back, you can get in close. And all you got to do is get your racket on that next volley, dump it into the open court. That's, that's 
Davis in the ad court when he serves to the backhand like he just did. That just brings Nadal into the center of the court. So even if you have a volley, you, you're going to have to hit another volley most likely. that inside out forehand well today. Here's another look at it. Players hit it almost like a windshield wiper nowadays, the way they come across the ball rather than through the ball the way we were taught. Stay with the ball longer. These guys just western grip, zip across the ball with a lot of racket head speed. taking advantage of that short ball from Nadal and that was one of your keys Nadal trying to maintain some depth on the ground he's so Corey you can't attack but it didn't work that time for the Spaniards so three games all and not much uh, between these men so far no break points and all the games have gone to serve obviously just wait for the double faults if they happen for Corey and so far he's looked pretty comfortable on his second serve hasn't really been an issue yet he hasn't thrown in a double fault but if you remember once he does double fault, it seems to infect his whole game. The rest of his game falls apart. He hasn't done that yet. But the big pressure comes at four all, five all, those kind of scores. These guys have been some of the worst drop shots I've ever seen either of them hit. They both normally drop shot very well. But <laughs> this one almost hit the uh, service line. I mean, that's an invitation to have your opponent hit a winner, which is just what Correa did. what these two can do defensively and Corey what he's doing offensively although he should have put away this forehand volley and then Nadal really had a chance to put that backhand away but now the point is started over again and Nadal loses patience with the point tries to go for not his favorite shot the backhand down the line so all of a sudden the first bit of pressure on someone's serve and it's Nadal who's in a little bit of trouble Drop shot there from Nadal, and it really had Corey on the move. He did, but Corey still should have been able to control. You see that little flick of the wrist? He should have made that ball, forced Nadal at love 30 to come up with a passing shot. Easy to say from here, sitting here. First the break points of the match. And it's the top ranked Argentine. Chance to get ahead 4 3. Oh, frustration from Nadal. Missed 
it wide. And Corey strikes first here in the opening set. He has a break and a 4-3 lead. Guillermo Correa, the number two seed, has a break advantage against Rafael Nadal, his clay court rival. And this is the China Open final, the championship match. And Correa putting in a very strong test here in this first set against Rafael Nadal. I'll leave Shiras alongside Jimmy Arias. And this is warming up very nicely as Nadal is being challenged. This is where you start to worry, and you'll see the, the nerves of Guillermo Coria as he has not played well in a couple of matches with the lead. When he gets up a break, that's the game he tends to double fault and throw it away at times. We'll see if he can. So far today, he's been perfect mentally. He's played a beautiful match so far. He's attacked at the right times. No, nope. you called it. There you go. And for whatever reason, normally that infects his game. The rest of his game, he starts to make some errors when he when he throws in the double faults. That's his first one of the day so far. Had double digits against Thomas Johansson yesterday. No, an uncharacteristic. Error from Nadal, but Corey is applying just that hint of pressure. Well, that ball was silly to miss from Nadal. He's got his opponent a little bit rattled. He's got to put the ball in play. That's all he was trying to do. Well, we're experiencing a few problems with our satellite transmission, so we apologize for that. We will certainly expect and uh, anticipate that we'll be coming back momentarily. Well, if you look at the right corner, Corey is so quick that his <laughs> legs are way over there. His body's still on the left. <laughs> he's, he's really moving well. Now, this transmission coming straight from this wonderful tennis center, the Beijing Tennis Center, which will also be the site of the 2008 Chinese Summer Olympics. A wonderful facility, 15 field courts, as well as uh, this wonderful stadium court. So this will be the site of the Olympic tennis event as well. And you have to think that these two guys will be a part of it. So here is Nadal with a couple breakback points, and we're certainly looking into our transmission to ensure that uh, we won't have any more problems. Well, Coria has been very effective when he's been attacking today. Interesting at the changeover today uh, at this last game, he asked the stringer to come and take a racket and get it restrung. Now, who, would he be asking for tighter tension? You well, think? You know what? I don't know because he's been playing so well. I would say get the same tension, but they had new balls. A lot of guys like to change rackets at the new balls. Wow! What a play! And he made that look easy, and that was not an easy ball taking it on the rise as he did. Look at that. That took some talent, and he has some talent. There's no doubt about it. This guy has a lot of skills, and you've seen it today. He's been able to attack and win a lot of free points with clean winners against Nadal, something that's not easy to do from the back of the court. And he's shown you that he can come to net a little bit. He's done a lot of good work so far. He just saved two break points. I thought he was going to be broken right back. Nadal has played a little tentatively on those break points, just trying to get the ball in play, just rolling it short. 
And that's the problem that Nadal has seen in the last couple of weeks. He did that at the U.S. Open. The ball was very short that he was hitting. He made Scoville Jenkins look like a top 10 player, and then James Blake took him out easily. So Nadal, when he's playing this style tentatively, just rolling it with topspin, he's very beatable. Yeah, James Blake certainly put together the kind of match that take that it takes to beat a guy like Nadal. So in the end, Corey able to fight off the break points. And he leads 5-3. We pardon the interruption for that transmission break. And we're certainly hoping that the problems will disappear, but you can see Nadal serving now at 3-5, so he's in a tough situation against a player who knows his game well. And I think Coria on the hard court has been able to hit through the court a little more effectively. He plays a little bit flatter. And as you mentioned, when Nadal plays short, he's vulnerable. He is, and, and you're right. Coria has hit through the ball. Coria has been the more aggressive of the two players. He hasn't had to rely on drop shots. He's only tried that a couple of times. And he's been able to win points hitting winners, and I didn't think he'd be able to do that against Nadal. I thought Nadal would keep the ball deep enough and be able to control some with his forehand and eventually wear Corey out because of the way Corey looked in that semifinal. He looked as though he didn't want to be there, tired at times, wasn't moving until the third set. But it has been all Corey so far. He's looked the better of the two players. Yeah, he really has, and uh, well, we understand uh, the, our frustrations or your frustrations here, and we're experiencing the same as uh, this transmission has been coming in and out, and we're not sure if it's weather conditions or the satellite feed itself coming from the Beijing Tennis Center, but here we are, Nadal 3-5, 15-all. It's not a bad try by Corey. He is so deft with this touch, and boy, there was a chance. And the other thing is, you're not, it's not that bad of an idea to bring Nadal up to the net. He, he does make some volleys, but you can see that he's not, it's not his favorite place to be. So I think you're still in decent shape if you hit those drop shots and bring him in. Well, Roger Federer, the world number one, he uses that tactic very often. It's not really a drop shot, but he plays an underspin backhand that's short, and he says, are you coming in or not? I and don't think Coria has that shot, that one that Federer hits. You're right. It's not a drop shot. It's that short in service line, a little shorter than that slice that stays low. These ground strokers can't stand. Well, Nadal, again, coming from behind on his serve. Guillermo Coria will serve for the first set when we come back. Welcome back to the Tennis Channel. I want to remind you that the WTA China Open, the women's tour, has a stop here in Beijing as well. Our coverage of that event starts Saturday, September 24th, 6 a.m. Make sure that you keep it right here for all the best tennis from around the world. And we're certainly excited about bringing you this wonderful rivalry between Guillermo Coria and Rafael Nadal. And it's Corey who has gotten the best of it so far here in the opening set, serving at I admire what Corey has done today. He's saying to himself, I know I can't, you can't knock Nadal off from the back of the court. You can't hit clean winner. So he's taking that first short ball, ripping it and coming in and relying on his touch and his volleys. And you can see the speed of Nadal, but he wasn't able to. Moving that quickly, it's tough to handle a shot. Still nervous for Corey about his serve. You can feel that double coming at any minute. Oh. 
That time, just too much topspin, too much pace from the Nadal forehand. And Corey had committed the sin of running around his backhand, giving up court, and then hitting down the line, but not in an uncomfortable position for Nadal. So Nadal was there for a quick cross-court angle. Suddenly, Corey was on the defensive, on the run. If you're going to run around if, and you go down the line, you better hit a near winner. Corey continuing to try to make good things happen. One of the few times that inside out forehand is misfired. Well, Nadal is such a force with that physical play. And that time able to break down Coria. Coria again trying to, that's a tough shot, that ball up above his shoulder with the kind of spin that Nadal puts on it to try to take that down the line under pressure on a huge point. That's tough to come up with, and he wasn't able to. So a couple of break chances again for Nadal. Boy, Coria has learned how to serve in one day all of a sudden. Still nervous for him if he misses the first serve here. Well, he mentioned that these two have played three times in the past. Coria beat Nadal in 2003 in their first meeting. That was in Monte Carlo. went for the run around his back end and hit it right really to Corey had left that cross court angle open and got himself in trouble two bad plays in this game that both players have attempted that one cost Nadal a chance to break back Dahl has had a pretty good year in finals. Nine and one. His one loss coming to the guy who never loses a final, Roger Federer, and he had him two sets to love in the finals in the Tennis Masters Series Miami. That's why incredibly the number one seed this year is 22 and 0 in ATP Tour Finals. Yeah, that's remarkable, isn't it? You get the feeling that Federer and Nadal have been a lot of those number one seeds. Well, between them, they've won 18. <laughs> Just a couple of errors in this game have crept into Coria's four, and he missed one inside out earlier in that ball. He was just trying to roll cross court. Caught the tape. Another break point. Uh-oh, this is the first break point he's faced with second serve. Let's see if he can calm those nerves. Break back. Well, he stood up to that challenge so well. Just aggressive with the forehand, particularly back cross court, and able to keep the ball off Coria's forehand, which had been doing so much damage. So five games all. And that may be a turning point in this match, an opportunity for the man from Argentina. Instead,
here, even at five games all. going away a little bit from what got him that lead. He stopped attacking in the last couple of games, stopped coming to the net. He had some opportunities in that point where he didn't get in. so good at getting himself in position and then reclaiming territory yes, you know is. I mean he's outside the doubles line and just quickly back into the play he really is he's incredible at it because there were a few sharply angled balls in that point that Nadal hit that he had Corey is so far out of position it was tempting to try the drop shot but I think Nadal saw that Corey was already back in position he better make this drop shot excellent <laughs> Now, Nadal did so much good work to break back, yet here he is at Love 40 in the very next game. Amazing how Coria comes to life when he sees a guy come to the net. He saw how quickly he moved to that floor, and it was a good approach, but he was almost happy. Here's my opening. The low passing shot he had, the shot he wanted on his backhand, just pushed it wide. Serve for the first set for a second time. Well, a remarkable nation, China. The fourth largest country in the world, 1.3 billion people. But what a beautiful place, a wonderful destination. And this week it's the ATP Tour in Beijing, the capital city. Only one of the growing nations in the world's marketplace. Wonderful blend of new, of course, with the ancient, the Forbidden City, a popular stop for many of the players. 
as is Tiananmen Square. The main plaza there. Well, here is... How is uh, 1.3 billion the fourth largest? Isn't that the largest? Does it make sense oh, to me? Well, first, fourth largest, I believe, in terms of size. size but okay. in terms of population, I believe it is the largest. Yeah. 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 Just making sure that there's not more than 1.3 billion somewhere else. <laughs> That's right. Leif Shiras alongside Jimmy Harris to let you know we're tennis commentators. We're not uh, real good when it comes to uh, national population numbers. score suddenly attacking and a great instinct for what he needs to do in order to win. He does need to get a little more aggressive in this match, I think, if he wants to win. He can't allow Corey to keep taking control of all these rallies. Well, we were just talking on the changeover, saying, should Nadal talk a little more? And here he is. Quickly turned it into offense when he finally got a shot. Is Nadal played the way I think he almost should play? Is ripping forehands, just controlling things with his forehand. But all of a sudden, he got himself in a little bit of trouble. And look at Corey, a sneaky little move forward, pokes that ball down the line, comes running in. Took four or five big blows that he was able to absorb from that forehand side of Nadal before he finally got a shot he liked the look of. Corey on the changeover looked up at his box at his coach and pointed to his head saying let's let's keep it together mentally let's stay tough and he has done a great job today so far only one double fault He's done a pretty good job of just throwing in the slow, stinky cheese on the first serve. Not really putting a lot on the first <laughs> serve, but let's get it in and start the point. And he's been the better player once the point gets going. So why not? It's always bad when he throws in the slow one and doesn't get it in. You know, that's when the double faults seem to come for him, is when he's trying to throw in the 30 mile an hour first serve and misses it. You can see the brain start falling apart. His second double fault now. Because it's not a technical problem, because his serve basically is strong. Good legs, good motion with the racket. Simple, simple little stroke, you're right. Uh-oh. And the crowd starts to moan. That can't help mentally either. Wow. Coria coming in on this backhand approach. And Nadal at his best with a great curler down the line. Coria gets to it with so much underspin, the ball goes sideways. And the problem for Nadal there was he had to, he was running so fast, he had to stop without touching the net. He had that worry along with just getting the ball in. Set point. An overrule, but a late overrule. If I was Nadal, that would drive me crazy. The overrule didn't come immediately. It came after Coria started to argue. 
Yeah, well, the tight call goes against Nadal. Coria wins the opening set 7-5. Oh, what a set by Coria. Boy, he played well to take it 7-5. And Nadal served fine, but just not able to do enough. And Coria seemed to be the one making good things happen. I almost don't like the 83% first serve percent from Nadal because that means he was throwing in too many slow serves. I think he needs to try to get a few free points on his serve. He lost his serve twice in that first set. And hand it to Coria. He has struggled mentally with his serve all week. He wasn't going to be able to do that against Nadal and win this match, and he was able to get control of that nerve. Just a couple of double faults. He threw in a couple of aces to offset those, so he can serve like that. He certainly has a chance as he's won the first set. A couple of silly errors from Nadal and a lot of running. It was a physical first set. This shot was so crucial, that ball pretty fortunate the way it turned out. There's the stop from Nadal. Yeah, he cannot believe that he missed that one, but what a play by Corey to cover the passing shot, because that's when Nadal really is at his best, when he's in trouble having to come up with outrageous passing shots. And but Corey with his speed covered it. The thing is, none of the other players this whole week, even the natural volleyers, Justin Gimmelstop, Peter Vessels, guys that come to the net, were able to cover that forehand down the line that curls around. You know, he gets so much juice on the ball, Nadal, in that passing shot. His forehand actually is curving from outside the doubles line to in. And Corey has obviously seen it enough in the five hour, 14 minute final they had. He knew where he was going <laughs> and he was able to cover it. Well, it just distinguishes their matchups is the running, the hard running, and just this competitive intensity from both men. And well, that what's, first set was full of it. What's funny to watch is they get each other out of position sometimes or themselves out of position and that's when the other player starts to take advantage of the point. Thank you. Now this has been a busy day around the Beijing Tennis Center as the crowds have really flocked in to see this championship match. Nadal and Coria making their debut appearances here at the China Open. There's an example of Nadal sort of getting himself a little out of position. He can't do that against Coria. He runs around his backhand and just flips it up to the backhand side of Coria. Coria is quick to move in and punish him. Well, Nadal, six feet one inches tall, 175 pounds. He's the heavyweight of these two men. And Coria, under six feet, just 165 pounds. But he's added about five pounds of muscle from last year. And I think he sensed that he had to add something. Yeah, he does look stronger, definitely. You look at Leighton Hewitt. A great Australian who added about 10 pounds of muscle to his small frame as well. He feels that in, in order to play against guys like Nadal and Federer, he needs to have a few more powerful moments. some fantastic anticipation to go along with his speed. Take a look at this point as he's in trouble here. Takes one or two steps and he knows he's already on his horse running. He really, I don't know what that shot he just tried was. He was there in plenty of time. It was almost a half topspin lob, half angle, which turned into not a very good shot. And this is a shot Nadal normally loves. Look at the movement. It still tried to find the line. Nadal has nothing on his serve today. Just sort of throwing it in, starting the point. Oh, he 
could not cut the volley. Just unable to do enough with the two-hander and Nadal defending furiously from the back of the court. Correa, one of the best I've seen at being able to move back, be pushed back, but then immediately come right back up to the baseline. He's playing a lot of these points right on the baseline and has his opponent, Nadal, on the defensive. Really didn't have to try that shot, Correa, because he was there in time to poke that volley back in play, bunt it down the line. He didn't have to try the underspinning drop shot that comes back over the net. That's almost what he was trying there. Well, unlike the Rome final, this is a two out of three set match. But even with the shorter format, you feel like Correa, well, his fitness will be tested today because he's doing it's the majority the of the running. Well, Nadal seems to be able to run forever. He's a guy that has, I remember before his French Open semifinal with Roger Federer, I was covering the other semifinal, and Mariano Puerta hit one, and we followed him with our cameras into the locker room, Puerta, all the way through after he won his semifinal. And there in the locker room was Nadal doing sprints, full out sprints, before a three out of five set clay court match. Yeah, that's frightening. <laughs> yes, it is. And then as the coin toss, you know, after the coin toss often, he does a sprint to the back of the court to get ready for the warm-up. A full sprint. will have to pick up his play and here he is playing with depth earns the short ball that's what we haven't seen enough of from Nadal he hasn't really earned many short balls he's been on the defensive much of this match look at Coria he's come out today and played his best match of the tournament so far more aces than double faults that's the first time this tournament he's had that stat going in his favor about the cumulative pressure that these players can apply on each other. And here's Nadal now again, just working that top spin. And that time, Corey, you're breaking down. You always have to be so sharp with your feet on Nadal's ground strokes because you, of the spin and the bounce. You're absolutely right, you do. You've really got to move there. That was the problem for Corey on that backhand. Just a half step lazy. And it's tough to control with that spin he's putting. Now well, here is Nadal looking to strike back. It's a shot that Nadal hits where it looks like an easy volley, but it's not. That ball's dropping so quickly that it's hard to, to work the volley, really. Yeah, it looks like an egg coming over the net. It's so heavy with topspin. Boy, he has served well today. He really has ace in this game and that point set up by his serve and you saw how quickly Coria moved forward when he saw the short ball he didn't wait for it he jumped on it didn't give Nadal any time to get back in position the problem is Nadal's relentless just keeps coming at you heavy spin run Get every ball back in play. There's no time to have a letdown. You cannot have a second letdown with your feet. Oh. Oh. Can you believe it? Well, the double faults do affect Coria. And it affect him in a bad way. Loses his serve. And well, that's uh, a positive development for Nadal here in the second set, having lost the opening set. So up to love. 
And the third double fault from Korea on the day. Could be the most costly of them all. made one shot where he hit this heavily underspin drop shot and from that point on he thinks that's the play is the first let court helped Coria the second let court helped him even more and then what <laughs> <laughs> well I'm not sure that was the shot to select he had a lot of options from that point really that was awful Well, it's amazing how a break of serve against you can just change your perception about a match. Especially the fact that he double faulted to lose the game. For whatever reason, mentally, that just has freaked Coria out throughout the last couple of tournaments. When he double faults, he, he tends to fall apart a little bit. He has not done it this match up until this point. The two times he double faulted before that, he didn't lose serve those games. Nadal's still allowing Coria to sort of dictate the action. He's coming in, he's coming forward, even on Nadal's serve. Nadal's, he needs to pick up first serves, go for a few, get some free points if he can. He has the ability, but I think he feels as though Coria, even if he hits his big first serve, Coria is going to make the return, so why waste the energy? But I don't think that's right. I think he's got a big enough first serve, he can get some free ones. physical point that was from both players really this was the one shot and all had the point set up and miss hit but then still forcing the long runs but again most of that point Coria was the one trying to dictate taking it early he's allowing Coria to really control a lot of these rallies create enough pressure with the forehand. Jeez. One point started out with a good first serve from Nadal. A little more juice on it out wide and got him in good position for the rest of the rally. If you're going to throw in slow serves, at least place them well. But a lot of these serves he's just putting in the middle of the box. Sure, he's serving 85%, but what is that? Oh. 
Lindahl stepped it up in this point, stayed on the baseline and kept the pressure on and forced Corey to try a difficult shot. That ball changing the direction down the line. That's a tough ball. break a three love lead the championship match of the 2005 at China Open when well, it's living up to the hype the expectation here Nadal taking on Korea and it's Nadal striking back with a three love lead here in the second and this has been a quality tennis match both men really battling hard we expected the intensity and uh, in some ways, we expected these struggles that Corey is having. They've really marked all of his matches here in Beijing. But you can see now he's talking to, once these double faults start, it's amazing how the rest of his game suffers. He's talking up to his coach now, and his whole attitude changes. He suddenly doesn't want to fight as hard. He served so well in the first set. Just getting it in, I know that doesn't sound like much, but that's all he needed to do. That was a semi-tank type in the forehand. Just happened to go in as Corey upset at the double fall thing. Said, I'm just going to hit this forehand as hard as I can. And it finds the court that might bring him back into the match. Well, Nadal always forces you, it seems, to play one more shot. Although I'm surprised that he didn't. He loves the drop volley here normally, Corey. That's, that was a nice time for it. Could be on the verge of saying, let's try to work in the doll a little bit. Let's play for a third set. So that's what it seems like he's doing. He doesn't want to stay in any of these rallies right now. He's trying to end the points a little more quickly. That's the play. That I don't know why players don't use against Nadal more often. Serve wide and serve and volley in that deuce court. He's got to hit such pressure to hit a winner return. Because from where he is, just putting it in isn't good enough. So Nadal still with another break point chance to get to four love. Well, Nadal just playing too short. And Correa taking full advantage. He's on top of that two-hander. And then watch how he closes here. You do a little subtle split step, really. Once you see where the ball is, you don't have to stop any longer. You just run to the closest point that you can catch the volley. part of Nadal's game that needs a little bit of work is that slice backhand. Is you saw two slices in this point, and they're both high and sit there like a melon. And that time, Corey was able to step up and hit a clean winner off of it. But you want your slice to, to bite a little bit, stay low. That's the whole key to the slice, get it low. Make your opponent hit up a little bit. Advantage, 
Nadal does secure a second break. So things looking good for the Spaniard. And he can fight his way back here and force a final set at four love. Well, plenty of tennis going on here today at the China Open. Justin Gimmelstab and Nathan Healy, they win the doubles, taking out the Russian side of Dmitry Tursunov and Mikhail Yuzny in three sets. Actually, that's the second year in a row that Gimmelstab has won the doubles here. He won it last year with Gray Oliver, this year with Nathan Healy. So Gimmelstab always seems to play well in Beijing. Yeah, he even played well in singles here as he took a set from Nadal in the second round. Well, interesting to see Nadal amongst the top ranked players in the world. It's been a while since a left-hander finished the year-end rankings inside the top 10. You have to go back to 1999 when Rios was number nine. Of course, before that, Greg Rosetsky was in there. 97, we had three left-handers in the top 10. Rosetsky, Tomas Muster, and Rios. So we've had some uh, dry years, but you think with Nadal now, we're going to have this left-handed presence again in the game. Of course, Mariano Puerta, the Argentine, in at number 10. He's also a left-hander. It's funny, neither of those lefties are using their leftiness well really they're just doing it with their ground strokes and the way they play but normally in the past the lefties have the advantage because of their swinging serve that they can produce in the ad court and remember all the big points on your serve virtually all of them happen in the ad court all the break points except for 1540 that's the serve right there that it's tough for a righty to deal with his backhand you're out of the court you're in trouble right off the bat Of course, Tomas Muster, great left-hander, Goran Ivanisevic, another big left-hander. A couple of Spanish left-handers and Feliciano Lopez. Fernando Verdasco. But for now, it's this left-hander, Rafael Nadal, who has a five-love lead. Here in the second set, leading five love. Correa will serve just to stay alive in the set. Will he try and win this game, Jimmy, or will he just let it go and uh, you know put his attention in the final set? I'm not, I normally would try to win the one game just to get some momentum oh. back. But who knows with Correa? He's played some strange stuff here in the last couple of games. It's really most of this set was self-induced. This deficit that Coria faces. That wasn't a fantastic effort. That forehand didn't move his feet. It's been uh, a long time since Argentine tennis fortunes have been this rich. Three Argentine players inside the top 10. Four inside the top 11. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's face it, it's never been like that. I mean, they've always had Vilas and Clerk in the 80s together. And Martin Haiti was a top tenner a couple times. But they didn't have a whole gaggle of them the way they do now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, Nadal turned his back and ducked down. I think it was a good idea. You never know with Coria. He yeah. might just try to get under your skin by tagging you. Yeah, Coria's so, not out there making friends. No. He's going to try to win. And so the high, somewhat short drop shot isn't something you want to face. Oh. No, it reminds me a little bit of Coria taking out Leighton Hewitt in that Davis Cup 
match in Melbourne earlier, and Coria hit Hewitt with an overhead in one exchange, and uh, those two went at it. It was a fairly ugly confrontation that they had. Words were exchanged. The captains were involved. That would be a good fight. They're both similar size. I'd like to, yeah. I'd like to see that. They should have let that go. Exactly. Well, they're in the same weight division. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure that no, Coria would want to take that Nadal. I don't think so. So here's Nadal serving at 5-1. Chance to win the set on his serve. It's in. Well, casual brilliance from Coria. It's been like that since three love, really, that he's become casual. He's got to get that intensity back right away. Sometimes it's hard to turn it off and on. Brilliant point from Coriag. Nadal has to realize it. Going, <clears throat> going down the line, he's got to be careful. He can't allow himself to be opened up to those those tough cross court shots that Corey is hitting. Where's that been? Just once in a while, I know he just did it, but yeah, he's he, been just throwing in slow serves. I wonder if it's a question of confidence or just tactical. He's thinking something else. I, I, I think tactically he thinks he's got to get first serves in. I don't know why. I don't think his second serve has been that punished by Corey. Corey just normally puts it in play. It's funny because Nadal actually called this ball out. If you get a chance to see it. As he hit the shot, Nadal lifted his hand up like you do in the juniors and called it long. <laughs> and Corey didn't buy it anyway. Wanted to ask the umpire, huh? What about that one? I wouldn't have wanted to play Corey in the juniors. No, my, me neither. You would have wanted to call an umpire early in that match, I believe. Both sets end with an overrule, and a somewhat late overrule. Yeah, Jerry Armstrong in the chair having to get involved uh, in that one. Well, Rafael Nadal's won the second set. This championship match comes down to one final set. Look at these serve percentages from these guys. 86% for Corey. He still managed two double faults. Probably the only two serves he didn't get in the box. He double faulted on Nadal at 80%. Nadal not coming up with many winners in this match, as Corey is really the one forcing the action one way or the other. Making some mistakes, but trying to get to the net. Nadal content just to scramble and duck. Yeah, he's such a powerful athlete, and uh, I think you mentioned it the other day, what a powerful runner he is. He really moves and gets his weight into these shots. He's uh, he remarkable for his size. Yeah, tennis players move. I've seen it once before on a tennis court. It was a guy named Herschel Walker, who was a football player playing in a pro celebrity match. And the way he, the, there was a drop shot that lobbed over his head, then a drop shot came. And he covered the court from the fence to the drop shot in literally like three or four strides. Just what I call power strides. Big booming run that no tennis player has that type of movement until Nadal. Nadal also can move with those powerful big strides. Yeah, he almost has the build of a, a free safety or an American football player. Rumor has it that he ran a 4-2 40, which that's maybe the fastest guy in the NFL. I don't know if that's true. 
That seems a little bit too quick. Well, great that's speed sprinter. from both That's, a, that's a true world-class sprinter speed. So the final set, Guillermo Coria will start things off. big believer in running around your backhand just to roll it in the court. I've never understood that. When I ran around my backhand, it was because I'm trying to hit the ball. Nadal sometimes gets himself in trouble by running around his backhand and then doing nothing with it, just sort of putting it in play with some topspin and gets himself out of the center of the court for no reason. And Corey is someone that can make him pay for that. Corey sees that and comes forward, hits the ball quickly to the open court. That's incredible stuff. And it should not discourage Nadal from what he just did. That's the kind of tennis he can play, taking it early coming in, but who can cope with that little karate chop underspin and then the legs to cover the drop volley attempt. God, what a runner Corey is. Yeah, right? he's incredible. And you know what's amazing is how well he gets, as you said earlier, back in position. That's what people need to realize is that not only is he quick, but he's working so hard to get back in position after his shots. Well, that is a very strong game to start out this final set and sending a clear signal for Nadal with that one point that he won. Boy, long runs and finishing with that backhand pass. That's got to give him a big boost here in this final set. I think it helps that it was a 32-minute second set for both these players as far as from a physical standpoint, there shouldn't be any physical problems for this match. That semi-tank that Coria threw in after getting down three love made it easier for both these players to compete at 100% for this entire final set. We mentioned Nadal 9-1 in finals this year, the only loss to Roger Federer in Miami. Guillermo Coria, well, he was 1-3 in, in finals. He won the title in Umag, Croatia, on clay, but he was also finalist in Monte Carlo in Rome, and he lost both times to this man, Roger, excuse me, uh, Rafael Nadal. So can he do something he has not done this year, which is uh, take out Nadal in a final. Of course, something of a milestone year for Coria. Surpassed 200 match wins this week in Beijing. So accumulating some fine numbers. Nadal has 71 match wins already this year. Add to the 45 he had from last season and the year before that. So he's just starting to make his headway in terms of those career match win totals. That's some better play from Nadal, and the serve really setting things up for him. Look at how much space he has to hit into. And I just like the fact that he was not behind the baseline. He also took that ball early. If he, he has the talent to take the ball in the rise, 
think that's the next stage in his game. You don't need to do it on clay courts as much. You can get away with his back behind the baseline. That's a better serving game from both players coming out for this final set in strong fashion. I'm sure that Nadal, when he gets on a hard court like this, he falls back into his habits that he's developed on a clay court. So I think he really needs to start thinking more in terms of this surface. What do I need to do on this surface? Well, especially because he says he wants to win Wimbledon. That's the biggest goal is to win Wimbledon. That's not going to happen unless he is able to come forward a little bit. Oh, yes. Well, watching a player like Nadal play at Wimbledon this year, seeing him lose to Gilles Muller, do you think they should have separate rankings for surface? It's certainly, for at least for seeding, maybe they should. I mean, I know Wimbledon's the one tournament that does sort of seed the way they feel like they should for the grass court players. But you got to have one general ranking. Otherwise, it would get too confusing. finish at the net and Nadal's making it increasingly difficult for him to do just that. Throughout much of this match Coria was coming in when Nadal was a little more out of position than he has been the last two points when he's trying to come in and Coria is a decent volleyer but not good enough to stand up to Nadal's passing shots if he doesn't have him really scrambling. And you're just sensing that Nadal is turning this match in his favor right here. That was not an overrule. He's looking at Jerry Armstrong. This was just a late call. As the linesman did call this ball long just a little late. I'm not sure if it was. That was close. So three break points for Rafael Nadal. Not too much room down the line. And it's Nadal who secures the break. Boy, he is in some fine form here. To revisit some of these teenagers who uh, have uh, accumulated titles in a single season. These are players who have done it five or more. Should Nadal win this, he would surpass the great Mats Villander who had a fine year in 83. And of course, going down this list, you can see how some of these champions did so well at a young age. Now, we're missing Jimmy Arias, who actually had four titles in that same year that Mats Volander had nine, 1983. That was a good year for teenagers, obviously, <laughs> 1983. Volander almost doubling, more than doubling me up with the nine. I did have four, and I did miss the end of the year. I played my last term at the US Open, got sick and didn't play again. So I may have been able to be on this list, but you'll never know now. Well, you make a tennis channel graphic. You have made the big time. <laughs> I didn't quite make it, unfortunately. We had to add me. Thank you, though, Leaf. Well, there you go. Leaf Shiras alongside Jimmy Arias, a man who won four titles at a, as a teenager in 1983. Well, both these guys have had some problems with line calls, and this time is Nadal looking up to Jerry Armstrong. Nadal played his strongest two games of the match the last two games. We'll see if he can continue that level. Although I don't like that little pushy serve that he's throwing in in this match.
Well, this is where that accumulated pressure of chasing down these high spinning balls from the doll. Suddenly, errors start appearing in your game, these cracks where before you weren't making mistakes. It's all about you have to be in position. You have to have a good base behind you to fight off those topspin shots. And if you're getting tired at all, which I don't think Corey is necessarily tired right now. Now that's uh, a bad error from Nadal. Interesting too that uh, we talked about Nadal being a left-hander inside the top ten again. You know, for a long time Spain had plenty of players inside the top ten. Alex Carreccia, Carlos Moya, Juan Carlos Ferrero. Now Nadal is the only man inside the top ten for Spain. I mean, there have been some changes and some shifts in the top players. And well, there was a time when. Virtually every clay court tournament was won by a Spaniard, and a lot of times beating another Spaniard in the finals. They controlled the clay court season. And now, really, the Argentines that we mentioned, the, the guys that are in the top ten, they're the ones controlling the clay court events, except for Nadal. He's, unfortunately for them, he's the best. Well, Corey is trying to mount a challenge here, but he's uh, ending up having to talk to himself. <laughs> Nadal gets to 3-1. Well, Nadal has just really picked up his play, hasn't he, from when he lost that opening set 7-5. Nine of the last 11 games. He's had a little help from this man, as Coria. His level, especially in the second set, has dropped. This third set is a product of good play from Nadal. Well, I'm not sure anyone does it better, the drop shot, than this man. I don't think anyone does do it better. Great wide serve. That's a serve you should use against Nadal all day. And then the delicately touched drop shot. <laughs> Backhand overhead winner. Well, it's an amazing shot when a player pulls it off, and uh, Nadal shows that he's got that one. He doesn't do much with that drop shot. It wasn't a great drop shot, but that was an incredible snap and strength that he showed over the backhand side. Well, you can never count out Guillermo Coria. Remember, he was down three match points to Thomas Johansson in the semifinals here and survived to play here today. Can he mount a comeback here in the final set? It's amazing how the instincts of Nadal are to back up as he slowly started giving up ground as that point was going on. Even though he had control of a lot of the point, he would hit and take one little shuffle backwards, hit, take another little shuffle backwards until he was finally three or four feet behind the baseline. He's got to change that instinct on these courts. He's still winning this match, but I just think to be even more effective. Well, Nadal is winning the match, but Correa is keeping a close distance. He's right behind. Down a break. Nadal, 3-2. Well, what a final here at the China Open. Rafael Nadal, Guillermo Correa, 3-2 in the final set. Correa trying to mount a comeback as Nadal has the break advantage, serving now in the sixth game. 
And this man always a dangerous player at any time in the match, whether he's ahead or behind. He's struggled when he's had the lead, but perhaps playing his best tennis when he is behind in the score. Well, and he's a guy that can break serve. He definitely does that as well as anybody on the tour. So it's tough to serve him out from an early break in a set. chance there. Wow, he's good at turning points around. Look at this position in the court and you think Corey is dead, but one shot and then in he comes. Misses the swinging volley and the fist pump from Nadal. missed a number of times and that's not a difficult shot really for him this was the tougher shot taking that back in on the rise ripping it now he's got the point in control somewhat steady misses the forehand on the run trying to flip it a little too much Nadal has gotten more aggressive as this match has gone on. He's come forward a little bit more and it's paid dividends. Here's another example. At the baseline and letting go with a huge forehand. Nadal is able to get to 4-2. Well, just a couple games away from winning his 10th title here in 2005. Of course, Corey would like to win his 10th career title here this week. He's won just the one title this year in Croatia. It's been really a down year for Coria in a way. He's a guy that in the last few years on clay, when you look at his clay court results, he was absolutely demolishing players, beating them badly. He hasn't done that this year. That play really works against Nadal because even when he gets to the ball with plenty of time, he doesn't. He hits too much spin almost. He can't really put the ball away. This time he misses the forehand, but there's been times when he's gotten to that ball when it was above the height of the net, and he still hit topspin and gave Corey a really good look at a passing shot. So good at that. 
What's funny is Nadal got a great read on this drop shot. He saw it coming. He was there. But he's not doing anything when he gets to the drop shots. He's just putting them back in play, and it allows Corey to do whatever he wants. He loves that. Always oh, begging for the line calls, Guillermo Coria. Wanted another. <laughs> I think uh, there was a bit of a head game going on here, and Nadal saying, OK, you can drop shot me. Well, I can drop shot as well. And again, Coria there in plenty of time. It sin to hit that ball wide. Three points in this game, three drop shots. And the drop shotter is 3-0. and oh. Maybe go for a drop shot serve here. <laughs> uh oh, that was one of those ugly type first serves that usually precede the double fault. No, he pulls it wide. That's you. Nadal pretty much using all of the racket on that return. Shank return sometimes tough to deal with. A lot of different spins coming at you. And all of a sudden, crucial, crucial time for Coria now. know each other's game so well. They're reading the shots as Nadal read the drop shot and the overhead. He knew overhead was coming. Well, you just get the feeling if Nadal could win this point, he would lock up the match. Two-break advantage. You also get the feeling that he somewhat needs the two-break advantage. He's tough to hold serve for a whole set against Guillermo Coria. This is a crucial second serve. Normally you don't say that, but Corey has been so shaky. No, the forehand's wide, and Nadal does secure the break. So he's up 5-2. The championship match of the 2005 China Open. Rafael Nadal serving for the title at 5-2 in the final set. And he has worked his magic here in this final, just wearing down his opponent, Guillermo Coria. Mentally as well as physically, just the constant pressure of those heavy topspin ground strokes, the movement. <laughs> stepped up the pressure a little bit. It's not, it's no longer Nadal on his heels, allowing Coria to sort of dictate play when he wanted to come to net, when he was staying back. All those things have been taken away with Nadal more aggressive stance in the court in the last couple of sets. <clears throat> Devastating. Yeah, and you bring his baseline game from 10 feet behind the baseline into the blue, and you can see how effective it is. And that's the shot, the one he just hit. That's the one that gives Roger Federer trouble as well. That heavy ball up to the backhand is tough for a one-hander, and it's tough for Roger Federer. He can slice it back, but he's it's the reason Nadal gives him a little bit of trouble. Beat him once this year, lost to him in five sets the other time they played. Uh. 
Corey has actually handled that shot pretty well. He's been able with his two-hander to get on top of a number of those heavy topspin ground strokes. It's just the weight of this match, the way the points went, finally took their toll on Corey. As you see, another, I don't know what kind of shot that was. They've tried some strange shots, that slice. And Nadal just attempted, was pitiful. Was that a drop shot or was that a slice? I believe that ball on the sideline was called wide. It was. Yes, it was. So Rafael Nadal at championship points. like a difficult task for Nadal after the opening set but in the end he won it easily in the last two sets 6-1 and 6-2 and the top seed the world number two wins his 10th title in 2005. Top seeds are now 23-0 in ATP finals this year. Federer, Nadal, the majority of those titles as they seem to have won the majority of titles on the tour this year. This was a pretty tough match for Nadal, especially, as you said, in the beginning. But Nadal saved his best tennis that he's played the entire week for those last two sets. He finally stepped up into the court a little bit, took control of the match, used the natural gifts that he has, the power, the strength, and the speed, and was able to secure what turned out to be a relatively easy last couple of sets. Yeah, and Corey, always a difficult challenger because of his movement skills, his racket skills. But another familiar moment for Rafael Nadal. He stands in the winner's circle here at the 2005 China Open.